everyone, welcome back for another ASMR video session. And today, let's talk about stars and discover some, discover some amazing figures and curiosity about them. Uh, for the beginning, we're gonna start with the closest star to Earth, which is our sun. Yes, the sun is a star. It's located at mere 150 million kilometers away from Earth. The sun has been happily converting hydrogen into helium at its core for 4.5 billion years and it's presumed to do it so for another 7 billion years from now when the sun will run out of fuel that will be the hydrogen it will become a red giant because we are talking about stars. It, this is a very interesting fact. The next one, it's about the first star charge, which was made or designed by the ancient Egyptians in 1534 BC. And yes, the Egyptians are credited with giving us our first accurate star charge. And this happened 3000 years ago. The color of a star can range from red to white and blue. Well, Actually, the color will give the star the temperature. The hottest stars are blue, the blue ones. The more mass you have, the larger the star core is going to be, and more nuclear fusion can be done at its core. This means more energy reaches the surface of the stars and increases the, its temperature. So, the hottest stars, hottest stars are blue and the coldest ones are red. Well, the most massive stars, giants, are shortest lived. They have the shortest lifespan. These giants have as much as 150 times the mass of our sun. One of the most massive stars we know is E.T.A. Carine. E.T.A. Carine. It's located about 8,000 light years away from our small Terra. Well, it's thought to have 150 solar masses. That means it has a mass greater than 150 suns and puts out 4 million times as much energy as the sun does for for our solar system. Well, the astronomers are expecting that this star, Karin, to detonate as a supernova any time now. That means that uh, this super, super star or hot star, Karin, maybe it's, it has a very short lifespan or it at its end of its
its lifespan. If this happens, when it goes off like a supernova, it will be the brightest object in the sky. The brightest object in the sky after the sun and the moon. It will be so bright that it will shine greater than the moon in the in the midday and in the midnight you can read texts from its light. Wow next you might be surprised to know that there outside in the universe there are between two hundred and four hundred billion stars. Each one is a separate Iceland in space, perhaps with planets. The closest star to Earth is Proxima Centauri. It's only located at 4.2 years, light years. So, in order to reach that start, we need to travel only 4.2 years with the speed of light. Okay. Well, when you stay outside in the night and you admire the stars, every star you see in the night sky, it's bigger and brighter than our sun. Yes, you can see, or you perhaps could, you perhaps think you can see millions of stars at the dark night, but now you barely see 2,000 of them. <coughs> what about the stars that are twinkles? Well, Stars don't twinkle. Stars appear to twinkle, yes, or especially when they are near the horizon. Well, the brightest stars on our sky, it's serious. It twinkles, sparkles and flashes so much. It's twinkling property of the stars. No, it's not. It's, in fact, a, a turbulence in our atmosphere. So that will show us the stars like it twinkles, but it's the light that it's penetrating our atmospheres. As the light from a star passes through our atmosphere, especially when it's near the horizon. We can only see only 2,000 2, stars on the sky. Look into the sky on a dark cloudless night, and you might incline to think you're looking at millions, but no, there, you can see barely 2,000 of them. Well, the stars, all of them, are made from the same components, same substances. Stars form from interstellar gas mostly, interstellar gas mostly, hydrogen molecules. When these clouds of hydrogen molecules and gases are pushed into a spinning motion, a small mass begins to form and continues to grow. The more massive gains the hotter it becomes, and when it reaches the right temperature, the nuclear fusion occurs and the stars is born. And this is the physical concept of how a star is born. Stars shine because they have been described as hot glowing plasma balls held together 
by their own gravity. It will be take 70,000 years to travel to the next, to the closest stars. And these are not light years, these are normal years. The closest star to Earth, like I said, it's only 4.2 light years away, or translated, it's 70,000 uh, Earth years. If you hope to board the faster traveling spacecraft, it will take about 70,000 years to reach it. Astronomers estimate that there are more than a trillion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Well, next is a very interesting concept. The more massive or mass has a star, the shortest is its lifespan. A very massive star may live only tens of millions of years, while a cool one will shine for one billion of years. At an age about 4.5 billion years, our sun is considered now a middle age. Okay, but these were facts about stars. Now, let's talk about famous stars on our night sky. And of course, the sun is the closest one. It will bright our days. But um, another one that you can see in the night, only it's Alpha Centauri system. They, this system of stars is visible often or mainly from the southern hemisphere. The next will be Sirius. Yes, you heard about Sirius or Canis Majoris or Alpha Canis Majoris. It's the brightest star on our night sky, and it's called Sirius, and it's the brightest star in the Canis Majoris system. Alright, next one it has a very codified name, it's called R136A1, and it's the massive, the most massive star in you can see during the night time. It's just a cluster in a Tarantula nebula in the large Magellanic cloud system. It's visible only from southern hemisphere. Well, in terms of mass, this star it has 256 times of the mass of the Sun. So it's like taking the Sun and multiplying its mass with 256 to get the real mass of Earth 13 6A1. Next star, it's Vega. Vega. Well, Vega is a familiar star to most of us and is the brightest one in the constellation of Lyra, Lyra, or the Harp. It is also part of an asterisk called the Summer Triangle. Alright, the next star which is visible in the night sky, it's Antares, Antares. This is another red supergiant called Antares. It lies in the constellation of Scorpius. It's visible to observers around the world. 
Well, its name literally means equal to Mars or Ares in ancient Greek. Right, next star, it's Rigel, Rigel, or Beta Orions, or Beta Orionis. Orion's brightest star, it's called Rigel, because it's in the Orion system. It's Rigel, and it's the seventh biggest star in the sky in terms of mass. Rigel is very bright. It's about 120,000 times the luminosity of the sun. Try to imagine that you take the sun and its light, brightness, it's multiplied with 120,000 times. And uh, I keep this special star for the end because it's the biggest stars ever discovered by human being and it's considered the biggest in the in our universe and it's called or it's named UI Scuti it's a variable hypergiant with a radius around 1,700 times larger than the radius of the Sun. To put that into perspective, the, the volume of almost 5 billion suns could fit inside the sphere of UI Scotty. So you can take 5 billion suns put together and you can insert it inside the UI Scotty sphere. This is how these stars it's it's in in terms of size. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do please hit the like button and of course I recommend you encourage you to leave a comment below. I want to know your opinion. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time. Until then, I wish you all the best. Like always, bye bye.